In the news tonight, more than 300 new COVID cases and two deaths. Test positivity doubles, WHO threshold. And Prime Minister urges Fijians to get vaccinated. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. Bulavanaka, Fiji. Fiji has recorded 386 new cases of COVID-19 and two COVID-19 deaths for the 24-hour period that ended at 8 a.m. today. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says five of the new cases are contacts of cases who are undergoing 14 days of quarantine in facilities in Nandi, adding that the rest of the cases are from the Suva Nosori containment zone. Dr. Fong says the first death from COVID-19 is a 66-year-old woman from Valley who was declared dead on arrival by doctors at the emergency department at CWM Hospital. He further clarifies that the woman's family reported that she had been feeling unwell at home for a few days and she was not vaccinated. Dr. Fong says the second death was reported yesterday as being under investigation to determine if the cause of death was COVID-19. He says this was a 24-year-old woman from Wainimbokasi admitted at the CWM hospital for treatment of a serious non-COVID-related medical condition and later tested positive in hospital. After investigation, her doctors determined that her death was caused by COVID-19 and not the prior medical condition. She was also not vaccinated. Dr. Fong says the death of another person who tested positive for COVID-19 is also currently under investigation to determine if COVID-19 was the cause of death. Chosaya Nanunga now joins us live. Chosaya, with COVID-19 uh, case number still in the triple digits, what are some of the areas um, of interest identified? Well, Atala, the health ministry continues to identify new areas of interest, uh, particularly in the Lami Suva Tonosori containment area. If we look at the health ministry's dashboard, a single case of COVID-19 was identified on Ngao Island in the Lomaiviti group. It is believed that the case is from Nawuke Langi village. I vividly remember earlier this week, uh, villagers on the island of Ngao were told by health officials to lock down their village boundaries for the next 14 days. This is after after 15 crew members, uh, 15 crew member rather, of the South Island Shipping Services vessel tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, they, the, they, they took the boat, uh, the Liahona, carried cargo to Nairai Mbatiki and uh, Ngao last week. And it is believed that some uh, people on the island came into contact with some of the crew members. And coming back to Vitilebu, new areas of interest uh, have also been identified, one of which is the Samambula Old People's Home. Uh, with confirmed cases and you know it's concerning to have uh, cases uh, confirmed at the old people's home uh, given that the elderly will now be exposed to the virus and also other new areas of interest have also been uh, identified which include uh, the Fletcher construction with two cases three, ca uh, three cases uh, uh, three cases rather at Tag Bel Belaria and one case each at uh, Rubin Rubina Medical Clinic and Sharma's Medical Center at Eva. Vilaka Chasaya. The national seven day average daily test positivity now stands at 10.2% and continues on an upward trend. This is double the WHO or World Health Organization threshold of 5%. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says a total of 3,240 tests have been reported since the first of this month and the figure is expected to increase. This, as recent testing numbers from one laboratory, has not yet been received. He adds the national seven-day test average is 3,055 tests per day, or 3.5% per 1,000 population. Prime Minister Borenge Mbaini Marawa believes that the most effective measure for Fijians to defeat the widespread transmission of COVID-19 is to get vaccinated. While speaking on Radio Fiji One's Nanonda Parai Minister program, Mbaini Marama says an influx of COVID cases recorded daily is concerning and the government is exhausting every avenue possible to ensure a sufficient supply of AstraZeneca vaccines for every Fijian who are 18 years and above. Details with Chasaina Nonga. 
the worst is not over yet, as Fiji glides slowly towards achieving full herd immunity and pave the way to some state of normalcy. I continue to encourage Fijians who are 18 years and above to get vaccinated at respective locations announced by the health ministry. The health ministry is beefing up its collaboration with provincial council offices to ensure accurate and efficient vaccination information or programs are thoroughly disseminated to villages through Turanganikoros, district representatives and community health workers. The health ministry is also embarking on the home vaccination program targeting the elderly population and those who are seriously ill. Fijians are urged to contact the health ministry should any family member unable to reach various vaccination sites due to their physical condition. Baini Marama is urging Fijians who visit vaccination sites to strictly follow COVID safety protocols. If a person tends to develop COVID-like symptoms, please do not visit any vaccination sites, Fijians are urged to bear with the vaccination teams with some delays expected at the site, considering the safety protocols. The health ministry has confirmed that at least 53% of the target population have received at least one dose, with 8.5% now fully vaccinated, and the number is expected to increase over the next few days. Chosei Inanuga, FBC News. The acting police commissioner, Rosiati Tundravo, has stressed that it is upsetting to see the high number of reports of breach of social gathering restrictions despite repeated requests and warnings of its dangers. This comes as 34 of the 53 arrests recorded over the last 24 hours for breaches of health and curfew restrictions were directly linked to the consumption of alcohol. Tundravo says those who continue to disregard the advisories and warnings are being selfish because they're risking the lives of their loved ones over a few hours of fun that only they stand to benefit from. He adds that people should never forget that those hours of fun would ultimately turn into days and weeks of suffering, pain and or even worse, loss of life. Kundravu has urged those engaging in any form of social gathering to ask themselves if it is really worth the risk. The acting police commissioner also highlighted that 10 of the arrests were linked to grog, while three people were arrested for failing to wear a mask in a public place within a containment zone. He adds that only three divisions recorded arrests with the with the Western uh, Division recording 26 cases, 13 in the Southern Division, while the Eastern Division recorded 14 arrests. And to our latest COVID-19 update. Three hundred and eighty six new cases of COVID-19 have been reported today. These new cases are mainly from the Central and Western Divisions. But there are five cases that have been identified stemming from cases undergoing quarantine in facilities in Nandi. Fiji has recorded 5,569 cases since April of this year. There are now 4,496 active cases in isolation with 1,101 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 27. Up ahead, Good Samaritans provide families a lifeline and hoteliers look to better days. Fifteen, welcome back. Fifteen families living in the Valilevu Heart have restocked their food rations today after a visit from a group of Good Samaritans. Five men from Nandawa have been delivering food rations to vulnerable communities for over a month. Christiane Uluwai files this report. Unemployment caused by the pandemic has disrupted the livelihoods of residents living at the Valilevu Heart community. The challenge that we're going through is because of unemployment. Those who used to work are now at home. For 77-year-old Saini Milivalu, the food rations is a relief to her already stretched budget. 
The social welfare funds that we receive are used to pay our rent and bills, and that's it. Rajnesh Lingam leads a group of five consent men who are forking money from their own pocket through donations from family and friends to help out wherever they can. Our priority is to make sure that uh, the families uh, here, uh, most of them who are needy families, are looked after by the ration. Each ration pack costs $50 each and can last the family up to a week or two. For many of these families, the simple act of kindness is their only lifeline during this pandemic. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. The Fiji CSO Alliance for COVID-19 Humanitarian Response has called for a united approach to address the COVID crisis. This is Fiji continues to battle against the transmissible Delta variant. Christina, Christiana Uluwai again with this report. In a study by the Fiji Women's Rights Movement, a significant percentage of the 574 women interviewed were not confident to get vaccinated because there is so much misinformation surrounding the vaccine. There were, you know, um, about 35.6 percent, which said that they were uh, going. I mean, they were they were hesitating. And the reasons are uh, the same as what has been described, which is it's the lack of confidence in the um, safety and the efficacy of the vaccine. Sashi Kiran has called on unity from all leaders in order to solve this crisis. Uh, because we all can contribute, this is not a political problem. This is a national crisis of a humanitarian proportions. And as citizens, we all want to come together and we've been trying our bit and we all have to do this together. Susan Gray says that health insecurity of rural women and girls is a top priority for community female leaders that they have engaged with. So consistently, really just over the first wave, health insecurities uh, of rural women and girls was really in the top three of, of their concerns. For now, it's actually the top priority. And that's coming from a constituent of over 600 women representing thousands of elders in the central, west and the north. The Fiji CSO Alliance for COVID-19 Humanitarian Response is an organization of female NGO leaders working to address the social economic issues exacerbated by the pandemic. Yeah. The alliance is calling on all leaders to unite as the second wave causes one of the most catastrophic public health crises in Fiji's modern history. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. Since the COVID-19 outbreak in Fiji, the Ministry of Commerce and Trade has registered a total of 50 new cooperatives, mostly engaging in administrative support service and wholesale and retail sectors. In a statement marking the 27th International Cooperatives Day, Minister Fayaz Koya says, in the past 15 months of adapting to the global pandemic, cooperatives have suffered tremendously. Koya says despite this, Cooperatives have become resilient and responsive to the needs of their members in areas of health, agriculture, production, retail, finance, housing, employment, education and social services. He adds with the values of self-help, solidarity and ethical values of social responsibility and concern for the community, cooperatives continue to showcase that they can sustain and help rebuild their community together. Koya adds that the cooperative industry was able to earn $17.7 million in revenue over the last five years, despite the current economic situation. As Fiji continues to work to contain the spread of COVID-19, the Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association tries to remain positive as it believes this is the only way to get things up and going. Chief Executive Fantasha Lockington says the first thing the tourism industry has consistently tried to maintain is surviving the crisis, adding that the industry needs to survive the crisis before it can begin to be revived. Lena Reese has more. As most industries look forward to the national budget announcement in two weeks' time, the focus now for the tourism industry is recovery and revitalization. Um, because we need those borders to be reopened and we need those international visitors to be returning for us to be able to um, really utilize um, some of that support that was uh, put into the budget. 
SMEs that make up around 60% of Fiji's tourism industry also need bank assistance to revamp and refurbish after an extended period of closures. These are the sort of businesses that will need the support to get back up again. You know, they will need to replenish their stocks, get access to their staff that they need to retrain. Um, they need to be fixing stuff around their businesses, uh, anything from sea walls to swimming pools that have been, um, uh, you know, taken some hit with the, the cyclones that we've had in the, in the past. With the objective to protect local employment across all sectors, the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation is urging Fijians to get vaccinated to help the Fiji economy recover from the impacts of the virus. Please, let's work towards being vaccinated because the quicker we get fully vaccinated, the quicker we convince our partners, international partners, that we are now ready to open our borders. Are you willing to open a bubble with us? All of that means employment opportunities for everyone. Meanwhile, the 2021-2022 national budget is scheduled to be announced on the 16th of this month. Lena Rees, FBC News. And federations plan return to play protocol. There's some more coming up. There is no date or set period as to when Fiji will return to sporting gatherings, but there has been a few federations that are, have mapped out return to play protocols and safety measures for when tournaments begin. Squash Fiji is one that has made plans despite having to postpone most of its tournaments and rearrange its sporting calendar. Vinina Rakautonga with this report. The break in sports has allowed some sporting bodies to map out plans. A lot of us are pretty much um, hoping to get back on court um, as soon as we can. That's all dependent on the uh, directives from obviously the Ministry of Health and, and uh, the Fiji National Sports Commission. But we're, we're hopeful uh, this time around when things um, sort of uh, ease off in terms of the restrictions and when sports are sort of allowed to um, proceed. We uh, we're, we're adamant that uh, we'd would be on one of the one of the first batches of sports to to sort of get back on court. Eh? Fiji Sports Commission Chair Peter Maisie says right now they're working on a new plan for return to play protocols, although it is not going to happen anytime soon. Only two sports federations have seriously come out with a return to sports, and that's Fiji Football and Fiji Rugby Union, from what I've seen. Um, and in the sports that we have been talking to, they've really been waiting to what is going to happen. It has been three months since sporting activities had come to a halt as Fiji continues to record COVID-19 cases. Benina Rakautonga, FBC Sport. Mainly fine weather prevailed over most places today. In the west, it was a sunny day with a cloudy afternoon. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, partly cloudy conditions with brief showers. Up north, clear skies with cool temperatures. At sea, southeasterlies were winds 20 to 25 knots, winds increasing to 20 to 30 knots from tomorrow. Turning to the tide, the next high tide is at 2.15 a.m. with the next low tide at 8.11 a.m. Sunrise at 6.41. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over Vanua Levu, Tavuni, the Lao Group, eastern parts and interior of Viti Levu. Elsewhere, fine weather with cold nights. Looking further on to Monday, fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Recapping the main stories, more than 300 new COVID cases and two deaths. Test positivity doubles, WHO threshold, and Prime Minister urges Fijians to get vaccinated. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we're asking, should vaccination be made compulsory to protect all Fijians? Visit our FBC News website to answer. 
and you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos by email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and also listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news for tonight. Stay safe. See you again tomorrow. Bye.